Hey, this is Zach Log the Great. In 2019, Brian Niemeyer put forth on his blog what he called the witch test. The idea is that if someone is attempting to use Christian appearing language to push fundamentally unchristian morality, usually left wing, you challenge them to prove they are Christian by publicly confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. Specifically, his formula is, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and God has raised him from the dead. I've seen other versions, including reciting and affirming one of the basic creeds of the Christian faith, Nicene, Apostles' Creed, etc. Now, one of two things will happen. They will do so, and you can proceed with the conversation on the ground that you are talking with a fellow Christian until they prove otherwise, or, far more commonly, they will refuse to do so. At that point, they have lost all moral authority to tell Christians what Christianity demands of them. Then, you briefly explain this to them, and have nothing more to do with them. Now, I bring this up not just to re reiterate Mr. Niemeyer's excellent plan, but to explain why it matters and why it is appropriate. I do this because I've seen more than one person who claims to be Christian object to this, say it's silly and divisive, and make various excuses for others who claim to be Christians but have failed the witch test. I feel like I'm dealing with people who have never read the Bible at all. In the New Testament, I'm not aware of any point where it tells Christians to welcome in and make room for anyone who sounds kinds of Christianish, especially not in positions of influence. In fact, we're repeatedly told the exact opposite. Jesus himself tells us to be on guard against false teachers and says that there are many who, on the day of judgment, will say they were his followers whom he will turn away, saying, I never knew you. Matthew seven fifteen to 23 Paul warns that Satan knows how to make himself appear as an angel of light. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. John the Apostle warns us not to trust every spirit, but to test them. 1 John 4, 1 to 3. This is the most basic Christian teaching, drawn from several places in the New Testament, but I see people who call themselves Christians call attempting to put it into practice divisive or silly. Perhaps I'm missing something, but I'm not aware of any acceptable reason for a Christian to refuse to confess the faith when called upon to do so. We are not Muslims or Jews. Christians do not have a taqiyah, or a Talmudic permission slip, to deny the faith. We are told to be ready always to explain our faith. 1 Peter 3.15 And the historical examples of our saints show that we ought to do so even when the penalty is death. Failing in this regard may be a forgivable sin. I leave that up to God. But it is definitely a sin. The only reason I can see for a Christian to refuse is pride in not submitting to the one who so demanded. But pride is itself a sin. Now, I will freely admit that these tests are not foolproof. There are people who can and will lie when faced with such questions. But that is a failure at the other end of the spectrum. That is a failure of being too lax, not too strict. If someone, when challenged, is not willing to make a basic confession of the faith, there really isn't any need to listen to anything they have to say further about Christian morality. Just because someone uses the name Jesus and says vaguely nice-sounding things is not in itself a reason to listen to them about morality or Christian doctrine. It's time to grow up 
exercise a little wisdom here. If you look back at the past couple hundred years of the faith, it should be clear that our biggest failure was not being too exclusive, but in allowing in people whom we should have shown the door immediately. It is well past time we start guarding the gates once more. This is hardly the only thing necessary, but it is at least a step in the right direction. So, when you hear someone using the name Jesus to push an agenda that is not clearly connected to scripture or long-held Christian tradition, for the sake of your own soul, be ready with a witch test. God be with you.